Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. I want to share a very silly story with you. There was a man years ago who walked all around in his bare feet, but he kept cutting his feet, bumping his feet, and getting injured because of all the things that were on the ground. Well, one day he came up with an idea of how to solve this problem. He was going to start gathering leather that he could find and put it on the ground. But since he didn't know where he was always going to go, he had to start putting it on the ground all over the place. And in theory, he could walk all the way around the earth if he wanted to, so he had to put leather on the whole earth. Well, as you can probably imagine, people thought he was pretty silly until one day he realized, you know, a better idea would be to put leather on my feet and cover them instead of trying to cover the whole earth with leather. Now, this may sound like a really silly, maybe perhaps even goofy story, but the truth of it is many of us live our lives this way. And I want to explain how. As we walk through life, we bump into things, lots of things. And often what we do is, instead of saying, well, what could I do differently not to bump into that or take care of myself so I don't get hurt, we blame the other people or blame the things that are causing us to suffer. Instead of saying, you know what I really need to change is myself, not cover the whole earth with leather. That's ridiculous. But yet, don't we often do it that way? For example, if you commute anywhere, whether it's by car, by train, by bus, by bicycle, guess what? There are going to be a lot of people out there that you're going to be encountering. And some of them may not be very polite. Probably almost every day you may run into people that are rude, disrespectful, and in many ways offensive. And yet no matter what you do, they keep showing up every day. Why is that? And you may continue to fight against them, rail against them, get really angry at them. And yet every day they show up again. It's like putting leather on the whole earth. You're trying to change the world through your reactions of these rude people where instead you could change yourself. You could say, well, I'm going to drive a little bit more slowly, not be in such a hurry. And when people do drive in ways that I don't necessarily like, I'll just let them go by and continue to enjoy my drive to work, listening to perhaps nice music, a good podcast, a good audiobook, or perhaps just a relaxing time to be by ourselves and muse on the wonderful things of life. Or how about this? I think a lot of us find ourselves in relationships that may not be going too well. Perhaps a marriage, perhaps a boyfriend, girlfriend, or perhaps someone you're in a relationship with that just isn't going well. Well, in this situation, you could say, I'll put leather on them. I'll change them. And then they'll become a lot better for me to tolerate. Or we could say, hmm, What could I do differently? Maybe I don't want to walk on them anymore. Maybe I don't want to be around them. Or maybe I want to change who I am and act differently when I'm with them as a way for things to go better. Because I can change me. It is very difficult to change another person. There are just so many things in life that we stub our emotions against. And we have a choice. We can either change them, change the circumstances, or change something within ourselves and you can probably guess which i think is a better path and a lot easier to do most of the time we just don't have much impact on other people or we can be rude and we can be angry and we can do a lot of things to get in their face and sometimes it works but the collateral damage to our hearts is awful and it's just not worth it wouldn't it be better to come up with tools that we could actually find peace and equanimity in our hearts, even when things aren't going the way we want, or people are, in a sense, bumping up against us and causing us to suffer? What if we could learn ways to protect our hearts so that when we do encounter people that are trying to cause us suffering, we have ways to protect ourselves? Let's go ahead and talk about that now. There are just three simple steps, well, sort of simple steps, that we have to do. The first one is we have to identify what the problem is. What's causing me to suffer right now? We have to identify it, see what the cause of it is, see where it's coming from, and look at it from a lot of different angles. What is the other person thing doing to me? What am I thinking about that? What am I response? Would everyone respond this way? It's like being a scientist and really discovering the root cause of the suffering. 
Again, is it external? Is it internal? Or perhaps is it a little bit of both? That's the first thing that we do. Let me use an example. Let's say we go to work and several days of the week, we end up coming home just tired, exhausted, and kind of miserable. So the first thing we would do is say, okay, what's happening when I'm at work that's causing me this distress, this suffering? Is it perhaps the people that I'm dealing with, the customers that come in throughout the day? Is it perhaps my boss and the way he or she interacts with me? Is it perhaps the work that I'm doing that I just don't enjoy and it isn't very fulfilling? And then we look at that from all the different angles and write it down. I think that can be very helpful as a way to assess what's going on. Or let's say we're in a relationship that isn't creating a lot of happiness in us. Again, we would say, well, what's causing this distress? Is it something that my partner's doing? Is it something that we're doing together? Is it perhaps a reflection of our differences and our personalities and we're just not very aligned up together? Or perhaps over the years being together, one of us has changed and one of us now is a very different person. So let me repeat. The first thing that we do is identify the problem. Really look at it from an objective point of view, gathering as much information as we can before we go on to step two. And here's step two. Now that we have our list, we're going to put in one category the things that are out of our control, that are external, that we really don't have a lot of influence over. I'm not talking about the things that we can control. I'm talking about the things external to us that we have limited control over. I mean, we may be able to influence them, of course, and if we change, they'll change, but it's mostly things that are outside of us and the things that we may not necessarily be able to control. So then we look at them and we say, well, can I influence them? I mean, there's always things that we can do with the external things. I mean, we can talk to them about what's going on. We can leave the situation. We can set up boundaries. There's lots of things we can do. Just choosing what we're going to do with the externals will make a huge difference. I mean, for example, if we have cancer, we have to then make choices. Are we going to get chemotherapy? Are we going to get radiation? Are we going to do nothing? There's lots of choices that we have to make and they may or may not happen. What I mean by that is we can get chemotherapy and it may not work, but we can get chemotherapy that we have control over. What we don't have control over is the outcome of the chemotherapy. Or let's say we're in a relationship. We can tell the, our partners that, hey, if you continue to make fun of me or call me names, I'm going to begin to remove myself from this situation. We can't control them or make them to stop ridiculing us, but what we can do is leave. Well, then we transition into step three, and this has a lot to do about my response to the events that are causing me suffering. What could I do differently to make things better? Instead of trying to put leather on the world, how do we put leather or shoes on our feet? That's what step three is about. Now, the great news is there's a lot we can control in regards to our behavior, a lot. The bad news is we may not like to do it. We may say, but Dr. Puff, I don't want to do that. That would not be my outcome. I want them to change. I want the situation to change. Well, again, good luck to that. But there's not much we can often do with external circumstances, but there's lots we can do with our internal situation. And we have to ask ourselves, would we rather be happy or would we rather be miserable trying to change the external world? I'd rather be happy. I hope you would too. But often it is a choice between our happiness and our controlling the external situation. Yes, we may like our spouse to behave in a certain way, but they may not be obliging. So we have to ask ourselves, would I rather be happy? Or would I rather have them change? And we can't control a lot of the external situations but we can change us. And the most wonderful thing about that is when we change ourselves, guess what? Our world changes. When we change who we are, the world around us changes too. They go hand in hand. If we want to improve our life, we have to change our hearts and the way we interact with the world. When we realize that, then our focus is far less on changing the external situation which we have so little control over, not none, but a lot less than we would hope for. What we have most control over is ourselves, the way we respond, 
the way we feel about things, our desires, our fears. In many ways, that's what this podcast is all about. Things that we can change. And there's lots we can change to improve our lives. But the key of it is realizing what we can control and what we can't control. And there's a lot of things externally that we just cannot control. But the great news is there's so many things internally that we can control if we work on changing them. And pretty much we can change anything. It does take work. It does take effort. But our attitudes towards things can always be improved upon. And if we look at things differently, then our world becomes a much better place to live in. One of the key components of this is living in the present moment, taking one day at a time, dealing with things when they come up. It's living a mindful life. Mindfulness is such a precious tool for happiness. Again, these are the things that we can control, but differentiating between what we can and cannot control is so incredibly helpful. I know the story I started with seems incredibly silly, but don't we all know people, perhaps even ourselves, where we've gone through periods of time where we're trying to change the world instead of changing ourselves? Again, I'm not in any way advocating that we don't care about the world and try to make it a better place to live in. Of course we're going to do that. But mostly what we can control is ourselves. And it can be exhausting to try to control other people. What we can control is our response to other people, setting up boundaries, choosing good friends. I mean, the list is rather endless, but the list works if we realize the difference between what we can control and what we can't control. But we also realize that when we change, guess what? Our world changes. And our world can be a beautiful adventure with wonderful things in it when we're able to do these three steps. So let's go over them one last time. The first thing is we gather information. What's causing us suffering? What's causing us suffering internally? What's causing us suffering externally? And looking at it from so many different angles that we really have a good understanding of what's going on. Then the next thing we do is we look at the things that are external to us. Some of them we can control, many of them we cannot. And then finally, we go to step three, which is, okay, now what can I change within me? How can I put shoes on my feet to make my world a better place? And there really are so many different things that we can do. We just need to see it from this perspective. Usually what we do is we're trying to change our world. We're metaphorically trying to put leather on the whole world instead of just put shoes on our feet. I know it sounds crazy that anyone would do that, but we have to be honest. Are we trying to do that sometimes in our world? Put leather on them instead of put shoes on our feet. Once we realize this difference, it's very freeing because then we can just focus on what we can change and what will work because we can always change ourselves. There's just so many ways we can improve. That's why we're here to improve our lives. But today we're talking about how we do that. And we do that by changing ourselves. That's mostly what we have control over. And when we realize that, we're gonna put our energy towards that and work towards having a beautiful, exquisite lives throughout our life. And so when we take our last breath, we can say, that was a good life. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, accept what is, love what is.